Welcome. This question says a four kilogram uniform six meter long horizontal beam is supported by a wall at one end and a rope at the other. The rope makes an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal. And what is the tension in the rope? So let's visualize it to begin with. Here's my beam. And it's kind of pushed against the wall. And we have a tension force here. It's four kilograms and it's uniform and that means from considerations of its center of mass or center of gravity I can think of this as being 40 newtons, that's mg and this is going to be three meters from there to there and three meters from there to there because it's in the middle of a six meter long beam um, two forces which are not mentioned, which really should be considered. Uh, what's holding this end of the beam up? And it's going to be a force of friction. And then what's stopping the beam from moving towards the left is a normal force. Uh, these are both external forces to the beam and so I've got to take them into account and I think that's a, that the only other piece of information I have is that this is 35 degrees so my first job is to visualize and to make sure that I have all my forces included I'm looking at the beam and saying what forces are acting on this beam and I've, I've got four forces, two of them were never mentioned, but I got four forces. And I've got to, I've got to get to that stage where I've thought about all the forces. Because my next step is to decide, well, it's clearly an equilibrium problem. So the two tools I have in my toolbox are the sum of the forces along any axis equals zero, and the sum of my torques about any turning point, if you like equals zero. It's really a turning axis as well. Um, I'm done my two, two sets of tools and so I've got to make sure I've got all the forces down because if I don't have all the forces I won't have all the torques. I'm going to attack this using the sum of the uh, torques about any turning axis equals zero and I have three unknowns. One, two, three. So to solve this thing using any kind of mathematical process, I'm going to need three equations unless I can somehow get rid of two unknowns. And I can. And what I do is I work on the principle that if I put the turning axis through a force, then that force causes no torque about that turning axis. So if I pick anywhere along this vertical line. If I put my turning axis anywhere along that vertical line, FF has no torque. And if I put my turning axis anywhere on this horizontal line, then FN has no torque. Well, the simple thing to do is if I put my turning axis there, then neither one of them has creates any torque. They forces still exist, but they don't create any torque about that turning axis. So I've got rid of two unknowns by, by carefully picking where my turning axis is. And now I can simply say, well, okay, this means that, um, let's have a look, it's going to be 40, there's my weight, times the perpendicular distance to the turning axis is going to be 3. And remember, if I look at this and it seems to be creating a tendency towards clockwise rotation, and it is, I'm going to call it negative. I'm going to add to that. Now, my force, let's emphasize my force, my force, let's make it a bit bigger, my force is not perpendicular to the distance I know. So for the torque caused by this tension, I need to either work out the perpendicular distance to the force, 
or I have to work out the component of the force that is perpendicular to the distance that I know. And to my mind, there's no right answer on this, but to my mind, it seems to me that it's a lot easier for me to recognize that this component of the tension is T sine 35. That's what that is. And I know the perpendicular distance to that, to that component of force. So I would say, oh, plus T sine 35 times, well, that is 6 meters away. Now, that is tending to cause a counterclockwise rotation about the turning axis. And that always, is always given a positive sign by our convention. And those two added together equal zero. So that means that um, T is equal to 40 times 3 over 6 sine 35 which equals 120 over 6 sine 35. So T is equal to 20 over sine 35. If I get my calculator and say 20 divided by sine 35, and that will be 34.87, if I let things run on, 34.87 Newtons. So there is my tension force. Um, so what did I do? I visualized. I asked myself, do I know all the, have I noted all the forces that are external and acting on this beam? And I recognized there were two forces that I didn't recognize. I put those forces in. I said to myself, how many unknown forces do I have? I had three. I said, is there any way I can uh, uh, eradicate two unwanted unknown forces from my equation? And I said, well, if I put my turning axis through the FN, it creates no force, uh, no torque. If I put my turning axis through my FF, it creates no torque. If I put my turning axis through both of them, then neither one of them creates any torque. So that's where I put my turning axis. I then analyzed the problem for the other remaining forces, the other two remaining forces. I asked myself, is this causing a clockwise or a counterclockwise torque? Um, I applied this to the sum of the torques about a turning axis equals zero uh, because it's in static equilibrium. And then the rest was math. If this uh, component did not come easily to you, then go back and practice components some more because, you know, components are not the issue here. Now they're just a tool in our toolbox. Um, and there we have it.